And Ramesh, uh, this was his first public talk ever. Was there many people there? Uh, there were probably 50, 60 people, okay. I would, I would so say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he got up and he delivered a speech because he had been a, a banker. I'm aware of that. Yeah. He was president of a bank. In he was fact. president of the Bank okay. of India. Yeah, yeah. And his orientation to group, he had been talking informally at his home to people who would come and because he had three books published and people were, but there was nothing formal. So in India, people would just stop by the house and he'd serve them tea and, and they'd talk. But here, this was his first formal uh, talk about uh, Advaita. And he did what he had always done in his life, which was when he was addressing a large group of people, he had written a speech. And he wrote <laughs> a speech about Advaita right. and delivered it. Yeah. And I had never heard of Advaita. I knew nothing about this, yeah. any of the Hindu-based uh, kind of non-duality. And I didn't understand a word the man said. <laughs> it all went right over my head. Yeah. Was the fact he was a banker, did that give somehow him more credence because he'd made it in the world? It, it wasn't a matter of credence. In fact, I was, after that first time, I never thought I, I would see this guy again because I was bored stiff. But I went off on a, on a business trip. My business had resurrected in those okay. two years. Yeah. Being sober helped it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it started to be successful. And uh, I was, went off to Korea on a business trip, and I came back about three weeks later, and it was as if something had bitten me in this uh, talk that Ramesh gave and had incubated in the three weeks. So I came back, and I went up uh, to hear him again. I said, There's something about that guy. I went up, and he was speaking in a private home up in the Hollywood Hills, and it was a small group of maybe 12, 15 people gathered. And he came in and he sat down and he started to talk informally, kind of like we're talking now. And I was mesmerized. I was captivated. And there was just, I knew I was in the presence of a very profound truth, hmm. something significant. I didn't know what it was. But what happened was my heart burst open. And even though I had no intellectual comprehension whatsoever of what he was saying in the space of my heart flowed an incredible powerful truth and uh, I was drawn back to that like um, a moth to a flame so when you say your heart broke open what was the, the feeling there what was the emotional or it was, it was a, a sense of love i right. mean it was like it was very much like falling in love where i mean i hope you've had that experience in your life where you've met someone absolutely and you just you can't help but think you can't yeah. stop thinking about them and you feel this this desire to to be with them and and to to, to experience the quality of their presence. I'm, all of that was there, you mm -hmm. see. And so I, I, I couldn't stay away. I had to go back. And as I went back, of course, the teaching, the, the pointers of the teaching started to click in, mm -hmm. in me. Because I guess you had a good mind. You, had a, you, you, know, you were successful in business. You'd read a lot. So you had the framework to absorb and develop the ideas that he was uh, that he was talking about, and from that you could then build a bigger picture somehow. Right, right, yeah. And then one day he said, I don't know how long this was, but one day he said that Wayne is giving a talk tomorrow. Oh, that's quite a bit later. It's quite right? a bit later. Yes. Okay. You see, at that time, um, that first year that he he came, this was now twenty two years ago. Uh, in that first, in that, that first year, it was all about me getting as much as I possibly could get from him, from the teaching. I was just like a sponge 
just trying to, to so get you, more. So you felt like a separate me on your path moving somewhere and you felt that he could help you find yourself or develop yourself or whatever. Was that how it felt but to you? Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. And the separate me uh, remains to this day. Okay. And by a separate me, I want to be very clear what I'm talking about. The separate me that was there then and is there now is the me that is named Wayne, that has a history that is associated with this particular body. That's the me that learns, that experiences, that thinks, that feels, that talks. That me has continued from my birth through that experience to this moment. But there's a lot of people here who teach non-duality yes. would say that when the big event happens, right. they disappear and they don't exist. Yes. Well, that's a an interesting way to talk about it and it's I prefer to talk about it differently and to be more specific about what disappears that because to me that's throwing the baby out with the bathwater that there is a me a functional me that responds and it is a a programmed instrument, if you will, okay. that it has, has by my genetics and my uh, environmental conditioning, I do things. I talk, I f think, I feel, and that me has to remain in order for there to be functioning. But it's also changing, isn't it? And and oh, absolutely. This is it because the conditioning is ongoing. We're learning, we're experiencing, we're seeing all the time, which changes the organism. And you're also unconditioning, as you had with your big experience. That's well, that's just, that's just a change in the conditioning. If we look at the whole thing as conditioning, everything that happens is conditioning, then the, the organism changes by this new event. So this, this new insight, this new event has changed the programming, if you will, of the organism, which is okay. the genetics plus the environmental conditioning combined to make the programming. So we can say the programming is constantly changing as the conditioning changes and as the, the organism itself physically changes as you grow older, as your hormones change, your, your outlook, the way that the organism responds, changes. Now, what is absent in this enlightenment, and what, as I talk about it, which may be different from the way other guests have talked about it, but the way I talk about it, what is absent is the sense of personal authorship. Now, this is what arises in you at the age of two and a half, where suddenly this organism stops feeling as if it's part of, I mean, that it, it simply is, and begins to feel that I am a independent entity capable of making things happen from my own energy because I'm independent and powerful. I call that, you know, for short, the false sense of authorship. Okay. Okay. And it is that which makes suffering in life and it is that which disappears in enlightenment. What remains in enlightenment is the functioning organism that continues to do things.